Tonight at 10 o'clock, a school gym torn down this week held cherished memories for some folks in Wayne County. Now people have questions for the school district. We'll explain. Plus, Mississippi's laws are changing when it comes to shoplifting, specifically for accomplices. We'll have the details. And the weather was pretty nice out there today, but get ready because we're going to see more heat and humidity as we go into the weekend. We'll talk more about it coming up, but your news at 10 starts right now. Tonight, WDAM 7 News is proud to be on your side with WDAM 7 News at 10. Welcome in. We're glad you're here. I'm Michael Clark. Folks in Wayne County have some concerns about the future of Buckatana School after its gym was torn down earlier this week. Our Trey Howard talks to a former student about memories there and her questions she has moving forward. There she goes. Decades of memories are what's left as the Buckatana gym is now reduced to a pile of rubble. It hurt. It hurt to see these walls come down. Lisa Taylor is one of the many former Buckatana students with fond memories inside the gym. She came there when it was still a high school to join the basketball team. As I come to Buckatana, it wasn't, I realized it wasn't just about basketball. She says her transition to the school came during a difficult time in her life and it became an eye-opening experience. I learned about life. I learned about movement. Uh, I began to heal as a young girl. Uh, so in this gym, it taught me love. It taught me life. Part of her love lesson is still with her to this day. I had my very first homecoming dance with my, with, my, with my country boy now, which is my husband, and we have a family of three boys now. Engineers condemned the Buckatana gym last year, forcing the school's basketball team to play the 2023 season at Wayne County High School. With rumors swirling, Taylor says she and others have the same questions. Where are we going to have graduation? Where are we going to celebrate events for a community? School leaders say for now, the plan is for the basketball team to again play its games at the high school while they discuss a long-term plan moving forward. In Wayne County, Trey Howard, WDAM 7, on your side. Now, Taylor tells Trey that folks in the community plan to meet this Friday and will look for answers from the district at the next school board meeting. We'll keep following up. And a quick traffic notice for folks in Jones County, MDOT's going to temporarily close both directions of State Route 529 tomorrow between Bennis Hill Road and Clark Watkins Road. You see the details here on your screen. That's going to close around 8 in the morning, but everything should wrap up a little after noon. MDOT tells us crews are going to be replacing a culvert there. All right, nice and toasty out there in the Pine Belt today. Patrick, what do we have on tap tomorrow? Yeah, it was uh, a little toasty out there today, but the lower humidity felt nice. I think we're going to see another day or so of the lower humidity, slightly lower humidity, and then it's just right back to normal South Mississippi summertime weather. Uh, right now, we're taking a live look over USM. It is currently 81 degrees out there. That right there is a live look from our Mississippi Power and Sky Cam. No big problems out there this evening. We're cooling down elsewhere. It's 80 in Petal, 74 in Moselle, 76 in Collins, 75 in a Grove and 79 down towards Brooklyn. Temperatures for tomorrow morning. We'll start off your day with everybody down into the low to mid 70s, but we're going to warm up fast into the afternoon. Low 90s as we go through lunchtime and we'll make it up to 95 for your high. Can't really let a stray shower, but most of us will stay dry. But get ready because we're going to slowly warm things up as we go into the weekend. We're going to talk more about that in your full forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. All right, Patrick, thanks. We'll check back with you soon. Shoplifting is a more common crime than you may realize, and Mississippi is changing the laws that hold people accountable for the crime. Lawmakers say there's a problem with shoplifting rings right now. The new law makes it easier to prosecute everyone involved. If someone steals more than $1,000 worth of items, it's a felony. Now any accomplice who's distracting the clerk or driving a getaway car, for example, would also be charged with a felony. I guess they, they kind of say, see it as they was not in the store, so they wasn't a part of it. And a lot of them they see us coming in the parking lot, maybe sitting in the store, in the parking lot rather, and see the patrol cars and they'll just they'll leave. But now we know you were there, we're going to come get you. There's another domino effect of shoplifting you may not have considered. Theft also drives up the cost of goods and could impact what products are stocked there. 
A major Supreme Court ruling will change how cities can enforce bans on people who sleep and camp in public places. On June 28th, justices came to a 6-3 to three decision to overturn a ruling from a California-based appeals court that found it cruel and unusual under the Eighth Amendment to punish people for sleeping outside if they had nowhere else to go. Before that ruling, cities had been allowed to regulate homeless encampments but couldn't completely stop people from sleeping outside. One Mississippi homelessness organization believes this decision will only make the crisis worse. I believe that, that uh, the homeless are going to suffer immensely. I'm on the front line, so I'm there with the homeless. I'm there shaking their hands and hugging their necks and listening to their stories. And when you're on the front lines and you get to meet them, you understand their humanity. And so I felt that it just, it was terrible for them to dehumanize people who are simply going through problems. Now Jackson leaders tell our sister station that they are looking at ways to help people who may be experiencing homelessness instead of punishing them. Electric vehicle drivers have a new option for quick charging right along Highway 49 in Covington County. Check this out. Woolwine Ford has just installed four of these, their new EV chargers at the dealership in Collins. Two of the units are level three chargers, so they're able to get motorists back on the road in less than an hour or so. An app on your phone can guide you through the charging process. And the dealership says they're fast chargers available for public use in Covington County, the first of its kind there. The level threes will charge the vehicle within, you know, 20 to 50 minutes, depending on the level of charge of the vehicle. That is absolutely wonderful for the uh, EV community. So having more locations to stop and charge along the, the way, especially main thoroughfares is, uh, is definitely very welcome. If they look new, it's because the chargers were just installed last week. A family of four from Laurel is now a family of nine. We caught up with the Myers family a while back when they were expecting quintuplets, but now the babies are here. Parents Ashley and Tyler Myers welcomed five new family members, Franklin Walker, Carter James, Sailor Kate, Ali Ray, and Nova May. You see the photos here. The parents say all babies are in good health. They say a lot of people rallied around them Today, the parents and their doctors talked about the successful operation. Like we found out the other day, it seems like, and now they're here. But we could not have done it without Dr. Morris, all of the staff here. And I'm telling you, everybody high and low that has donated to us, gifted to us, just checked on us, prayed for us, that is who has made us get this far because without them, we couldn't have been here today. UMMC will provide an update on the babies within the coming weeks. Folks in the Pine Belt are gearing up for the 2024 Blood Bowl, and WDAM7 teams up with Vitalin every year for the important event. Ruthie Anderson from Laurel is encouraging people to go out and donate. She's donated 12 gallons of blood throughout her life. Anderson tells us she knows it's so important to have that life-saving resource after her family members were in need a couple of years back. So she's scheduled to donate more blood at the Blood Bowl in Laurel Tuesday. It makes you feel really good. And uh, you just never know whose life you may be changing or, or helping and what family, you know, that you're encouraging knowing that they can receive blood when needed. Now, the city of Laurel came in second place last year for the Blood Bowl, so the Laurel event's going to be Tuesday at the Cameron Center from 9 until 7. A lot more to talk about at 10 o'clock. William Carey's Dinner Theater is marking its 50th anniversary with a tribute to Waffle House. Details on the show after the break.